Everybody, you're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Brian Posehn. Grandpa Metal comes out February 14th. Grandpa Metal, Brian, this is so great. And thank you for taking time to talk to us. Of course. Uh, so you've been working on this for a little while. Uh, how did it all begin? Well, I'd done a couple of other songs over the years with Scott Ian on my comedy record that I'd done for Relapse, where the, the first one almost... 15, 16 years ago now, I did uh, um, Metal by Numbers, and I had a blast doing it. And there was always the idea of, uh, you know, wouldn't it be fun to do a full record? And then we made a deal a couple of years back with Megaforce to do the record, and then and then we realized we had to do a full record. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it, but it wound up being a, a ton of fun, too. I'm stoked that it's finally out after all the time I spent on it. Yeah. People other than my family are now finally hearing it, you know? Definitely. Uh, was it planned at all to release it on Valentine's Day? No, no. just, you know, the dates had been moved around and, and we were originally trying to get it out by Christmas and uh, it just it just wasn't going to happen. And so when we landed on February, that was the obvious date. You know, it just made sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people will probably be buying it for their loved ones. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea, yeah. So how, how do these song ideas usually start for you? Is it all, like, lyrics first? Well, it's, no, it's mostly either the premise or the song title comes first. Of like, uh, with Satan is kind of a dick, it, it, that title came, and then, and then we wrote, you know, uh, Scott started writing riffs, and I started writing lyrics. And, and, uh, but it usually comes from what the premise, what the main joke is, or what the main gist of the of the song is. Uh, once I come up with that, and then come up with a title, it's, um, that's that's been that's been what works for me so far. You know, it worked on metal by numbers. It worked on you know more metal than you and. It's usually the, the concept first and then start fleshing it out. Just like I was writing a sketch, really. That's how I've looked at it. But is it ever, like, kind of confusing for you, though? Like, because you are a metal fan, first and foremost, but at the same time, you're kind of making fun of something that you love. Does it ever get... Well, like, yeah, but, but I think I can. If anybody can, it's somebody who loves it, you know. Definitely. Um, as a metal fan... You know, when I was young, anybody, you know, I always looked at metal like it was my relative, you know. <laughs> uh, you, could, you couldn't make fun of it if you weren't also with part of that family. And, and I feel like I am. And, and uh, it's just, you know, I, I uh, had done it with those other songs and I knew, I knew I could come up with a full record, a full comedy metal record and have it be like this cohesive thing. And I, I really wanted it to feel like um, some of the records I sat down with as a kid, but it can be to take on that, you know? And the fact that it starts off like a Motley Crue record and <laughs> there's sketches throughout, and, you know, there's not a through line, but I still feel like it's like this, this full, you could sit down and, uh, you know, and with headphones and that's, that's kind of what I... Uh, was hoping people would do with it, you know? Well, I mean, okay, I'll just kind of go through the list here. You got Scott Ian, Gary Holt, Alex Skoldnick, Brendan Small, and <laughs> Weird Al, just to name a few. I think you might be sitting on the metal album of the year. <laughs> I, I, that's awesome. I hope so. Uh, I mean, I made it for me in... You know, I made it for metalheads like me. I just, I just wanted to, uh, in any whim that I had, I wanted to flesh that out and then, like, get all these guest stars. And, you know, um, the other songs I had done, I had had guests on before, and I have all these friends that I've made over these years. And it was like, well, why don't we... Uh, then why don't we test these relationships and see if everybody will do it? You know, <laughs> and uh, really, everybody everybody said yes. There's only a few 
people that didn't make it on the record and it was really out of scheduling, you know. Uh, I, this kind of makes me want to, I was going to ask you this at the end, but I, I was recently watching, uh, you went on Ron Funches's podcast and had a good conversation with him. It was really really neat to watch. And one of the things you guys were talking about was just basically staying true to who you are as a person and then just trusting in that you'll find your own tribe. And is this a part of that? Is this like going further down? Like, this is what I want to do and people are going to come with me or not. They're like, Absolutely. Yeah. That's perfect. Uh, way of, uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of, I've been real lucky with my career but that I've kind of done whatever I wanted. And, you know, I'm not the most successful comic out there, but I have uh, fans that I really care about, fans that I, you know, that I feel like I have a lot in common with. You know, all the dudes, that, dudes and women that show up at my shows that like the same things as me, like, you know, like the same movies and the same bands, and, and uh, it's for them. You know, and uh, they've let me do all these other cool things, and I was hoping people will dig this. I, th I think we'll definitely dig this. Uh, what, being a metal fan, what do you think it is about metal that just lends itself so easily to comedy? Like, what, where is this hidden humor coming from? I don't know. I think for me, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people, metal is such a weird thing because metal, as, as, as long as I've loved it, I've seen people make fun of it that don't get it. And, uh, but then the people that love it and get it, there's also stuff to make fun of too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what you're touching on. Um, I don't know. Um, I, and that's always been some of my favorite stuff is when people actually had a sense of humor. I mean, when Anthrax would do stuff like I'm a man, um, you know, like you'd have this crazy thrash record among the living that's pretty straight and not really funny. And then the next thing they do is they release a single and, you know, yeah. and the goofy, the, them just messing around. I love it. Like violence. Uh, that band did a you know a B side where they messed around, and then I loved uh, the band Scatterbrain, which was uh, mostly I think a comedy project. Yeah, uh, that record, uh, one of the records that they did in the end of the '80s. I feel like every song was comedic, and um, and SOD, and I've always loved it when bands did that. I, mean, I don't know what lends it to it, but. I think it makes it even cooler when it's heavy and funny, you know. Yeah, definitely. And like you were saying earlier, like we don't—you don't really ever worry about backlash, do you? No, I think you know there were some things like in the first videos I did where people got jokes wrong. You know, people didn't get my intention on metal by numbers or metal than, more metal than you. But I don't really care. <laughs> you know. Um, they, if they got it wrong and they think I'm a jerk for for thinking this way and they're and they're wrong about it, like how I can't help that, you know. Uh, it almost I makes it funny here. Get the joke. I hope people get the joke and know and know my intention. You know, there's no way I'm not a guy that got into this to make fun of metal. Uh, you know, I love metal more than almost anything. I think people get that. I think the right people get that, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you, you've had a career now since the nineties. Uh, and you know, it's a lot really easy for people to once, once they get a bit of success to just kind of go through the motions and just phone it in. So has m m making the music kind of become another one of the ways that you like to challenge yourself? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I love to stay busy too. That's the key. But um, yeah, I love writing. I love doing everything that's not just what you know I'm known for: stand up and coming in a sitcom and, and being a weird guy. <laughs> you know, I have I have these other levels and I have these other things and interests uh, 
that I, you know, it's really fun to, uh, to work with. Definitely. Uh, so I heard that in your senior year of high school that you actually hosted a radio show. I did. Yeah. So, um, I kind of turned it around by then. My uh, first couple of years in high school were not that fun. And I got a, um, a buddy of mine. I might up being friends with like one of the most popular kids in school by the time senior year rolled around. And he, uh, he greased some palms and got, uh, you know, the right people to uh, give us some money. And we, um, we put a sound system in the school uh, to where the main courtyard, we could uh, sit up in this little room that we had and uh, play music before school and, and during break and at lunch. And uh, that wound up being a highlight of my senior year. Like, we'd go up there with a big gulp and, and uh, you know, uh, play the whole first side of Rush 2112. And uh, it was a blast. That's amazing. So did you have like a name for your show? No, I, I don't think so. We were the dragons. I think might've called it dragon radio or something like that. We just, I, I, no, we, um, it's just my friend Joel and myself. And we just, uh, kind of played whatever we wanted. And then people started asking us, it would be funny. We'd be on the school grounds and then people would request songs and, we had to figure out, you know, how much of that we wanted to do. Yeah. Because we wanted to, you know, Joel was not a metalhead, but Joel uh, had good taste from everything from the B-52s to Pink Floyd. And, you know, he would play stuff like that. And I would be mostly metal and then in uh, hard rock. Uh, but, you know, when kids would come up and go, hey, can you play Alabama? Because we were, uh, you know, in Sonoma in the 80s, which is kind of country. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had to uh, decide how many requests we were going to take. Yeah. It's a pretty political decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you remember playing Rush 2112. Do you remember some of the other stuff that you would play? Yeah, I played... Um, God, I can't remember what song right now. Um, something off the first... A Fistful of Metal, the first Anthrax record. Ooh. Uh, and then I played um, Metallica, Inve, a lot of like stuff the kids like, like Rat and Motley Crue. That's you know, awesome. The popular stuff at my high school. But then I was I was into some heavier stuff. A lot of kids weren't. Um, so that was the the more the thrashy, you know, the anthrax and that kind of thing. And the school didn't, like, stop you guys ever from playing any of that stuff? Well, the one thing we got in trouble for was, uh, I think it's Mean Street, but there's an F-bomb. There's an F-bomb in a Van Halen, too. And, uh, man, I, I still remember how quickly that advisor got into the building and ran, ran up to where we were. <laughs> like, it, it played, and I knew it. I knew the song. I knew the song. And I was just like, you know, well, let's see what happens. Huh. And uh, the part played, and Joel and I looked at each other like, uh, let's see. And then, boy, <laughs> you could hear him clomping up the steps to, to come yell at us. <laughs> pretty amazing. That's great. Uh, so do you ever plan on doing metal performances, taking this on tour, putting a band together? Not, not like doing a full show. What we're talking about doing, Scott and I, and maybe even another artist, would go out and um, do, like Scott and I would do, um, stand up or like, or more for him, spoken word, where we tell stories and that kind of thing. He'd start the show, I'd come out and do a half hour of stories, and then I'd bring him back out and we'll do a couple of songs, not either acoustic or with a small band. But that's that's one of the things. <laughs> Excuse me. We did that on, on the Mega Cruise a couple months back, and it was a blast. And so that's the intention of doing a little bit of that after this, you know, after this album comes out. Do you think Scott Ian will ever branch off into stand-up comedy? <laughs> I don't know. He's funny. He could. It seems Some funny. Other people have people. Less funny people have. <laughs> great 
Uh, you know, if you're looking for a band to bring on tour, why don't you just bring along Organic Submarine? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> uh, he doesn't want to tour. No, that's my son's band, uh, yeah. my 10-year-old. And Organic Submarine hasn't written much lately. Uh, I don't know if they're going through a weird phase. But, uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he gets it back together. They'll just call it a hiatus, right? Yeah. <laughs> I heard that you were uh, into bands like Graveyard, who are kind of going back to like a stripped down early Black Sabbath kind of a sound. Yeah, I did like that. You know, with Kraft, a um, couple of bands I checked out, European uh, kind of sounded like Orange Amps and had that 1972 uh, kind of Sabbath, you know, tone. I like a lot of that. I love it too. One of the things I love most about it is the fact that the drums sound real, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you listened to any of the Opeth stuff, the new? I do like Opeth. I haven't heard the new record, and I know they're touring, but uh, yeah, I mean, that. What do you press the band? I've seen them before. Uh, what do you think of their, how they've kind of gone into a new sound? They've kind of stepped away from their death metal roots. Well, they've kind of tested their fans the whole time, I feel. I feel <laughs> like that's, a, that, that's what they're really known for. It's kind of, uh, you know, didn't they do two different records in, at one time? Where, yeah. I, my, yeah, where they put out a heavy record and a soft record at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I love that they kind of do whatever they want. And, you know, and again, don't. You know, care about the metal fans, but also, but also, like, you know, if you're going to be salty about it, yeah, move on. You know? <laughs> uh, before I let you go, I just wanted to say, Mission Hill was one of my all-time favorite cartoons. I thought you were absolutely hilarious in that show. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That's still one of my favorite things I've ever done, for sure. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what, what is one of your, uh, in your mind, one of your most underrated projects that you were really proud of? Um, I love Uncle Nick, uh, the Christmas, the anti-Christmas comedy I did that's been on Netflix for the last couple of years. Um, some people have found it. It's pretty culty, but um, I'm really proud of that. Uh, Definitely. You know, I, I got to actually act in that and play like a fully rounded character. And, um, that and uh, I wish people had seen um, uh, Five Year Engagement. I'm in that Jason Siegel movie and I'm kind of like one of his buddies, me and Chris Pratt, and it's before Chris Pratt blew up. Right. And uh, But uh, I feel like the only guys that ever saw it are, uh, were made to see it. <laughs> like it's one of those it's one of those date movies it looked like it was going to be like bridesmaids or whatever and, and I think guys um stayed away from it and it, it hurt it um, and the few the few guys that have told me they've seen it it was always like yeah my girlfriend made me watch this or my wife my wife showed me this <laughs> and uh, I wish it hadn't been handled that way <laughs> Well, uh, we're running out of time here. I need to say thank you. Uh, we're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Brian Posehn, Grandpa Metal, out on February 14th. Brian, is there anything else you wanted to say to our listeners? No, just stay metal. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Take care. Yeah, you too.